Hey, hello everybody in my Facebook group. It's Friday, so it's time for the Friday Facebook Live, which is, I have to apologize, not a live today because as you can see, I am still on holiday. But plans didn't work out the way they were going to work out. So have a look, this is my arm. I had a kayak accident. I've been kayaking for over 30 years, whitewater kayaking, and I really never ever had an accident. Um, now I didn't do it for five years, so um, my level was still good, but my, 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 uh, my fitness wasn't. So at the end of the trip, I was pretty tired. I made a silly, silly mistake. I had to roll and it was a very very shallow part and it was <clears throat> very big current uh, heavy strong and i was upside down and usually i just use my paddle and roll back up but that this time i was uh, bumping against all kinds of rocks uh, my head my shoulder and uh, what happened is that uh, my ear my legs because i finally uh, left my kayak i swam I immediately felt something was wrong, so I have dislocated my collarbone. It's very rare that that happens, but I hit a massive rock with my shoulder and the, well, the collarbone is very static and fixed. That didn't move, but it moved up and it popped out of its socket. So, well, that was the kayaking trip for me, unfortunately, because I really, really had such a good time. It was so good to be back in my boat, to be back on the water, back in nature, camping on my own for a change. I don't know if I mentioned you, but four years ago I divorced and um, yeah, it was good being on my own again. I mean, I am going on holiday with my kids and I love it, but it also was good being on my own. But unfortunately, it's Friday now. I was supposed to be in my boat, <laughs> in my kayak in the French Alps. Now I'm on my way home. Uh, my friend, she had a similar accident, <laughs> but she has a history of dislocated shoulders with kayaking. Uh, I never had that before. So if you've had it once, it's bound to happen more often. But anyway, um, enough about me. Um, Today we are going to talk about um, attracting your ideal client or how to get rid of your client. So first of all, there was a question, uh, how do I appeal towards my ideal client? Well, basically <laughs> the answer is however you want to. First of all, you need to know who your ideal client is, but you should never be different than um, who you are in real life. So you should appeal the way you, well, like me, you know, I'm, I can hide that I've had an accident. I could have taken this uh, brace uh, off my shoulder so that you wouldn't know, um, but why would I? Why would I hide myself? <clears throat> and that's the same for you. Just be who you are. If you're not bold and confident and you need to do videos, you, you can address that. Like, hey, you know, I'm, this is new to me. Um, I've never done this before. I'm a bit uh, anxious. So it's always good to be yourself towards your ideal client. So you never have to play a role because that's tiring. You shouldn't do that. Uh, you know, doing business uh, shouldn't cost you a lot of energy. It should be fun. You should love doing it. Um, and if you don't love making videos, you might love to do something else. So how should you appeal towards your ideal client? It's, it's difficult for me to answer because I don't know you and I don't know your ideal client. So in that case, we, we, should, have ha we, we should have a session together to figure that out. Um, but like I said, my biggest advice is always be yourself. And of course, you choose the channel where your ideal client is. So if your ideal client is a lot on Instagram, you should be on Instagram. If your ideal client is visiting a lot of events, eh, they, they are happening again because COVID is sort of pulling back, um, you visit events. The other question was, how can I get rid uh, of a client? And she put it more nicely, how can I say goodbye to a client who I don't want to work with anymore without burning bridges? 
So how should I get rid of a client? Without burning bridges, basically that's not something that you have control over. Uh, that's always up to the other person. If your intention is you want to do it nicely and you want to do it in a good way, uh, that's what you do. You you have a nice conversation. You 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 address why. Just be honest. Um, say that you can't help her. Um, I mean, you can't say she's not doing what you want, or you can't say she, uh, your client is is being wrong. Just say you know I've we've been working together for quite some time, and I see that you're not getting the results that um, I'm looking for with you. Um, so I've decided that it's time for us to say goodbye and I think you would be better off with someone else to help you. I think that's a really nice way of putting it. But then again, you, st you have no control over how they are going to respond. So you can intend to say goodbye to your client nicely. Well, that's, that's one part of the game and that's what you do. However, they, how they take it, you have no control over that, okay? So you can't determine if you say goodbye without burning bridges. It's up to them. You don't know how they're gonna take it and how they're gonna respond. And you have no responsibility for that either. That's their game, okay? Now, the other question was, how do I say no to a client? Um, well, I always have an intake, uh, a 15 minute call. And you know, I've been talking about the 15 minute calls a lot. Uh, and I urge you to schedule a 15 minute call with me. I just need to um, brace my arm because <laughs> it's getting a bit tired here. I'm getting wobbly. You need to check out who the person is. You need to love working with someone. You need to be 100% convinced that you can work with them and that you can help them and that you can even guarantee them a result. That's always what I'm aiming for with my clients. Um, so how do I say no to a client? Um, you need to know who your ideal client is, first of all. If you know that, you know immediately when you have a conversation with this person, if you can help this person, yes or no. And if you know you can't, then you, you just need to say that. Say, I, mean, I have a lot of conversations with women and they sell a product uh, to consumers. I am not good at that. I can't help women if they sell a product to consumers. I can help them if they sell a product to businesses. Because selling to businesses is very easy to scale. Selling to consumers is also easy to scale when you're very good at Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising. I'm not. You need an agency to do that. Um, and so, so that's why I don't work with these kind of people. I always address that. I say, hey, listen. Um, this is my ideal client and I now can hear it's not you. So um, I really thank you for the time we had. I really thank you for uh, having our call. And if I know someone who can help them, I will even forward them to, the, to that uh, kind of person or to that agency. Um, so that's how you say no to, uh, to clients. Um, but I think behind all this and behind this question, there is something about setting boundaries and about the fear of saying no. We women, we, we love to please everybody all the time. And that's not uh, right for yourself. Pleasing other people means somehow you, will, you, you, you get their gratification. Um, uh, so so that, that makes you feel good. But pleasing others is certainly not pleasing yourself uh, usually we expect something in return not consciously but subconsciously we look for confirmation or the gratefulness so that we can feel good about ourselves so saying no is all about setting boundaries being honest to yourself dare to say yes to yourself that's basically where it's all about saying no to someone else is saying yes to yourself that is underneath the questions. Um, why should you be polite saying no to someone? It's because our society uh, figured out that's a good way to do. So that's why we want to do it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. But um, if you're angry and mad with someone, why should you be polite? Why don't you want to burn bridges? I, I, too, I do sometimes want to burn bridges with clients if they don't pay me. 
or if they're being rude, that I mean that never happens, but it does happen that they don't pay me, then I, why should I be nice? Why should I not want to burn bridges? You know, um, so it depends, of course, of the situation, um, but it's, you don't always have to be nice. And it's definitely okay to say no. And that feels scary in the beginning, I know that because we have no control and eh? we already established that how the other person is going to respond um, and we're afraid we can't handle the response and that's why we want to be nice but you know it's it's not about being afraid it's it's and it's not about being in control as well oh <laughs> see i'm in a hotel <laughs> someone just walked past <laughs> he's doing his job and he really was polite, he ducked away, but he didn't know I had the camera on selfie mode. So I think it's, uh, it's time for me to finish. Um, we're in Nancy at the moment, driving back home. Uh, it's another five hours to drive and uh, then I'm home. So ladies, I hope you've um, learned something. Um, do join my um, YouTube channel, uh, sign up and also uh, schedule a 15 minute call with me. I'm, uh, I, I was gonna go next week on holiday, three more weeks driving my car. At the moment, as you can see, I, uh, I cannot shift gears. <laughs> so uh, my friend is driving. Uh, she has an automatic car, car, but still if I would be driving, it's, it's not allowed, uh, I wouldn't be insured. But anyway, I was saying I am going on holiday as soon as I can drive again and shift gear. I'm going on holiday to Italy with my uh, my youngest daughter. We're going camping and I really look forward to that. I was going to go swimming a lot. I doubt if I can do that, but whatever, we'll, we'll make it work. Uh, I, I'm, I can adapt myself magically and wonderfully. So, but I was going to say I have slots available because my daughter, she always sleeps in. So in the morning, between uh, 9 and 11, uh, you can schedule a call with me. I have a few evenings for those of you who are on the other side of the ocean uh, and just schedule that 15 minute call. And let's find out if you're my ideal client. I can help you with anything you need to schedule your uh, to scale your business. Um, scaling a business is never only about attracting your ideal client or saying no to your clients. That was just one of the tiny little topics. Oh no, it is a bit big topic, uh, finding your ideal client. But if you have your ideal client and you don't know how to sell to them, or if you don't have the right price, or you don't have the right product, or the right packages, um, or <laughs> you, you, you can't coach, or you can't give them feedback, um, you know, there's really so many things. You can't position so many things you need to do. So it's never about one thing. Whenever I talk to someone, I always hear lots of things they can approve. Um, so schedule that 15 minute call and just let's, let's find out if I can help you and double your business within a year, guaranteed. Um, bye bye for now. Let's just oh, <laughs> do a small, small way for you and uh, speak to you next week. Bye-bye.